Because I don't know if there's going to be a point to it. And that's, uh, we might as well see. Why I'm here, I'm just going to give the presentations to you. So, could I maybe sort of find out what you guys are interested in? Maybe we could talk about something else, or you know what this presentation is about, right? No. No. See? <laughs> How about you, Daniel? All right. Let me, let me tell you a little bit about uh, what I do with the presentation. I put together with you guys and some of you want to see it. We can talk about something else. But the idea is kind of the value of you. So I'll give you the presentation before you have to see that. Or be portion of it. What I do is I uh, founded and funded and created this one company. And I brought a whole bunch of maybe a dozen other products to market. I've been doing this for quite some time. I also sit in on the Desert Angels screening panel. And I do stuff at the elder school sometimes with uh, mentoring and so forth. So I know a lot about business plans, bringing uh, products to market, what works, what doesn't work. That type of thing. So that's a little bit about what the presentation was going to be about. It was going to have, it was going to, have to do with business models. So there's a, 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 an intro that's a part you haven't seen before, which was given to the students at our school and so forth, which is about why I have a business model, what's it for, and so forth. But I don't know if that is of any interest to you guys or whether you want to talk about something else. Because I'll, my name is Chuck. Hey, Tyler Brown. Chuck. All right, Chuck. There, that's okay. Nice to meet you. So let me know what you're interested in. Uh, he's interested in the bar. In the what? The bar. Or something else which is going to happen in the back area. In that room. <laughs> door closed. No one does. Oh, come on. <laughs> it could happen right here. Talking to the track. It could happen in Time Magazine. That's right. That's right. You have a little bit of time. Although that child was much smaller than the one on Time Magazine. Yeah. He could be smoking oh, in the same yeah, <laughs> So if you guys would tell me what, what your interest is, if maybe I could go this way, Brandon, if you don't mind starting. Sure. And then either I'll do the presentation or something else, or something like that. Or we'll just leave. You know, yeah. the, just so I know what to talk about. Business. Well, tell me what you're interested in. The, the, the talk is supposed to be about business models. Okay. But if you're not interested in that, we can talk about something else. <laughs> yeah, I'll do my best. So I work for both as, as a web developer. So, you know. As a what? As a web developer. So we're kind of working on launching the book in the store online. So that's a model that I've been working on for a long time. Yes, bit by bit. Um, but I also am part owner of a business that isn't doing much right now, um, but it's been around for a while. Um, and that's an online auction business for charities. So like they come to me, I want to do a fundraiser, right? And then I return to them an entire environment where they can put up items, you know, manage all the items, all the photos for the items, et cetera, et cetera, and then launch their auction. So you're not full time with bookings, I think. I am bookings actually is now the majority owner of that business. Okay. So I work full time for bookings. I'm also part owner of the business, which is what bookings technically owns. Yeah. Bookings, by the way, is technically intergalactic. It's yeah. a holding company for everything. But with the other things. I got a senior joint actually. All right. So the reason I ask is if you know any web developers, I'm very interested. Oh, I yeah. imagine you do. No, Daniel Pierce. I don't even look at him. I know his hand. You know, I've met a couple while I've been here. Yeah, so I'd be very interested in that. Okay. So before we go, remind me about it. Sure, sure. Be happy. So you might be interested in this. You, you've seen it before. I've seen it before. I mean, knowing a little about you, I'm interested in more uh, online marketing, right. um, business models, um, picking an idea and bringing it to the internet, you know, especially right. on the web, and right. trying, to, trying to come up with the right idea to bring it to the web. Right? All right, so that, that may make sense. Or if you have specific questions, we we thought, just for everybody else. Oh, I'm Therese Carral, um, and I'm more or less focused in the creative industry, so in arts management, so I can work on the kind of stuff to get a better answer for what is arts market, but arts, arts market, but arts Maybe. management. But uh, I'd love to hear uh, more about uh, Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. 
IT web related mm -hmm. businesses. So this is a perfect place. <laughs> All right. So you may find this interesting. I guess you may find it interesting. So you might do. Yeah. Uh, Gene Rudolph. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Just last October, closed down my previously successful business, manufacturing and selling distributed wholesale and retail line of pilot supplies mm -hmm. and flight training aids. I felt my manufacturing I did the whole thing, I wholesale and my retail. Right. Um, my principal occupation prior to that, I guess I did that for 10 years, prior to motion picture production design. Um, I made movies. Um, my reason for being here today has nothing to do with computer. <laughs> it's nothing to do with uh, maybe it does have to do with starting a business, but I got something I want to give away. Which might not be. Uh, a couple of years ago, or a few years ago, I ran a motion picture workshop at the loft. So, mm -hmm. And it was successful. And since, uh, yeah, somebody came to me and said, we could do this again, we could do this again, and the university was talking about it. And uh, those things didn't happen. And um, I don't know if I want to make any money. I don't know if there's any, any money to be made mm -hmm. with a limited uh, enrollment. You know, SEO and 24 hands. There's a, there's a lot of hands on, a lot of in depth. It's more like a university class mm -hmm. than, you know, than a total workshop. Right. Uh, my reason for being here today, I won't kick your core. I'm interested in that. <laughs> um, it's not so much as to find a. Uh, it's, it's not here. It's not among the I got it very seriously, right. um, but it's to find a way to find the people that would be interested in a serious, in-depth, hands-on motion picture workshop. Be careful. They may be here and you don't know it. I'm wearing orange, maybe. I'm watching it. So, <laughs> Start up a business that, that does commercial media and, and runs um, social media strategies for independent artists. Okay. And so looking at you know, how do you value your time, build a model that is profitable in the long term. That makes sense. It's a practice that we have to talk about. Okay. It, it's a little off, so if I, don't, if I don't cover it directly, I've got a lot to say about that, so we'll ask me. website has a whole bunch of newsletters, mm -hmm. which cover a whole bunch of different topics. Everything that was mentioned here is covered in those topics. I won't be able to cover them today because that's not what we're. So if you get a chance, go to the website. Go to the website and go to the spot that says newsletters, and you'll see a whole bunch of topics. And you can download them, and they're usually about four pages. So it's not, not a huge uh, requirement of time to go through it. And it hopefully will be helpful. And it really is sort of a distillation of maybe 25 years of doing this kind of stuff mm -hmm. and having some successes and having some real big challenges along the way. And also helping other people. So I got a lot of experience sort of seeing this stuff firsthand, sort of from the inside. And there's a certain way to think, um, which is very helpful. And I tried to put that in the newsletter. There's a way to address a problem. Almost anyone could figure it out. We all have the intelligence, but a lot of times we're not sort of we're not taught how to organize our thoughts, what questions to ask, how to address the answers so that it makes sense. So of course we're, we're very much handicapped. If you understand the process of how to think about something, there's one, there's one newsletter actually says how to think. Uh, it's very helpful because I consider myself very average 
in, in, in many ways, but I, I made a study of people who were successful and tried to figure it out, why they're successful. So I've done the best I could to sort of distill that out and it's there and it doesn't cost anything, obviously. So uh, it might be helpful, so please take a look at it. So what I'll do is obviously it's a small group. Stop me anytime along the way. So the idea is for me to, I'll, I'll go through this. And for this presentation, you're all MBA students at Eller College. Right. right at the very end. Sorry? You got a bag. Well, like maybe you've got a couple other degrees ahead of time. So this is maybe your, your third or fourth degree. So we're going to talk about business models for fun and profit. I, I, I gave this, I think, a couple months ago. So with any kind of class, you've got prerequisites to understand the, uh, the material that's coming up. So here's the prerequisites for today. We're going to talk about business models. So I think and this sort of goes a little bit on, on, on how to think about these types of things. The first thing I always do whenever addressing something is trying to figure out what's the definition of the thing I'm talking about. So when you're talking about business models, before we go any further, I'm not going to do anything until I figure out what's the definition of a model. What is it I'm talking about? And if you can't define it, there's probably not much point in, in going forward. And that works with almost anything. I'm using this sort of as a, as a general, uh, general talk more than in regards to this. It's also a good idea to know what's the purpose of what you're doing, right? Before you start something, what, what's my purpose? What's my objective? When I get done, what do I want it to look like? So we'll talk about what the purpose of a model is, how we make them, how we determine how useful it is, and then I'll give an example. And Chad's seen the example before. It's a business that I'm launching, hopefully in the next 30 days, and I need some web programming help along the way. <laughs> but the, it's, it's about 85, 90% done, and it really is about 85, 90% done. Okay, so let's talk about Foundation's not so great. So maybe you better go back to the model. Well, I generally think of businesses as doing something. Right. So there's like something comes in, gets processed, goes out on the other side. That's good. Right. So yeah. something in that neighborhood there. I, I like that. That's, that's really good. Sort of inputs and outputs is ways yeah, that programmers will look at. Yeah, I mean, we think like that. And models and programming are often associated really closely with data. Yep. Data sets. Yep. Right. So, you know, just kind of inferring. <laughs> That's sort of how I came up with that. Yeah, I like that. Because, because um, the models that you use with programming are a very good example. It's a framework, right? Mm -hmm. Upon which you put everything else. If the model doesn't work right, good luck with the rest of it. Your foundation's no good. Right. So you exactly. have a firm understanding of, of really, and there's inputs and outputs and all that, which has to do more with, with thinking and so on. Let's, let's talk about that. The way that I put it, and this I just came up with before I went to this class, a simplified representation of essential reality. The reason it's simplified, is because otherwise it would be reality and you can't use it. We want to work with this thing, right? And reality is way too complicated. So what we want, what we want to do is we want to simplify that. And the reason it says essential is anything that doesn't have to do with what we're dealing with now, we get rid of, right? Because it'll just confuse us. Once again, if you organize your thoughts properly, it's not that hard. So the idea here is we make something which is simple. And I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. It's essential, and it's also an abstraction, which people in programming use all the time, right? An abstraction. It's not the thing itself. <coughs> it's, it's, it's a model. It's a model. That's what that's an abstraction is, right? You pull out the essential elements of it, and you represent it in a different way, which is more simple, and you can work with it. Yeah, like that's even it. in the movies, they do all that storyboarding, and all that, you know, lay everything out. Right. Exactly. Right. Well, okay. What, 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 why do we do, why do, we do models? Here's why I do Help us to determine uh, how well we understand reality. If you've got a model, well, let's back up. Let's say you can't make a model for what you're doing. Let's say you program Can't make a model? Well, guess what? You don't understand your task very well. Right? So that's why we make models. To go through this thought process and make sure we understand what we're doing. Make sense? And also helps us to make predictions from a business standpoint. If we have a model and it's working, we could, we could uh, judge it against what's going on now. We could also say, 
this will tend to do this outcome in the future. And if you have a business, wouldn't it be nice to be able to predict the future and be able to get in front of that and solve something or have some benefit for the future? A model will, will help you do that. Also, I, a model will help you to make improvements now. Things will come out. Gee, this doesn't work right. Why is this like this? So you question it and think about it. And by the way, all this theoretical stuff is going to be implied in a little bit. I promise we'll go on to stuff that's a little more tangible. Okay. How do we make models? We separate function from form. One of the guys said that, uh, what does that mean? The, the, the function of something, well, that's the form of something, let's say these things, it, it's, it looks like a light. That's, that's what it looks like. What does it do? It, it, it gives brightness so we can see things. That's the function of it, right? The guy that started Home Depot, he said that people weren't in the market for drills. They're in the market for what? Holes. holes. They're in the market for holes. That's what they want. They don't want to drill. They want something that to create holes. That's what they want, right? Form versus function. Back in the, in the 60s, franchising was all the rage for uh, fast food, McDonald's, and so forth. That's how they grew like crazy. Right? So that's franchising. So people say franchising, fast food, makes sense. Well, a bunch of guys got together and they said, well, why don't we apply this model to what we're doing? Maybe it would make sense. Maybe it's not just for fast food. They're a bunch of real estate agents. And they applied the model of franchising to real estate. They created Century 21 and sold it 10 years later for like 200 and something million dollars. Like that was a lot of money. So they applied. It's not just, you, you, what you do is you, you separate the form from the function of it. And then you can apply it other places. Okay, remove anything that's not essential. Oh, we'll talk about that. How do we determine if the model is accurate? We have a theoretical model. We try it out. We just see if it works, right? Uh, after you have it actually in reality, it's a little more, a little more easy because it's supposed to uh, produce some kind of result. If you don't have the result, maybe your model's not right. Okay, I'm going to give an example. Uh, anyone taking the economics class or forced to take any economics or in college? Econ 1. I, I graduated an economics major. I, I like economics. I'm one of those people. They, they teach you a phrase in, in Econ 1. Uh, and that phrase is satirist paribus, which all other things mean equal. Econ makes a lot of models. Why do they make models? They make models so you could think. So you could represent reality and say, okay, what's going to happen? How does this work? What are the moving parts and so forth? Because otherwise it's way too complex. So they do all these things. Well, economics, when you, especially when you start out, they make certain assumptions in order to make the models work. So what are the assumptions? In, in econ, the functions, the assumptions they make include there's perfect information, everyone understands everything, and there's no friction whatsoever, right? <laughs> Which is not true, right? That's why sometimes they don't work, right? So, that's interesting because as we get into the internet, the internet's an interesting thing. What does it move us towards? It moves us towards that model that we learn in economics. It gets us towards perfect information. We're much closer to that than we are. And it removes friction massively. Before, when you were going to sell your airplane parts, right? Or the parts that go ahead, the pilot supplies. Pilot supplies, I'm sorry. People have to know who you are. There has to be a, maybe a broker. People have to understand. Now what do people do? It's there, right? The information is available. Well, that's interesting. Because now we have, we have the reality of how things are in the past. You have the model that's in economics, and now it looks like the world is moving towards this model in economics via the internet. Well, that presents a lot of opportunities for people who could take advantage of it. And the early people in the internet took massive advantage of that, and they're now very famous and very successful and so forth. And the same thing is happening also within social networking, social e-commerce. There's, if you understand the model, what it really is in its essence, to figure out how to make it work, how to create value. That doesn't necessarily mean make a lot of money if, if you want to, great. But it, it, it allows you to make value. So, very quick example of a business model. This is called how to use free stuff to make money. This is the part of Chaz already seen. So, as I looked at the internet and social networking, it occurred to me there's a bunch of free stuff that wasn't free in the past. And that free stuff generates an enormous amount of value. And if we use the example over here about inputs and outputs, well, if you can have a model which uses this inputs of all this free stuff, that's pretty good. Because then if you could somehow harness that and create value, you could then sell it, create value, whatever. So I, 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 I coined the term the five free things, which I'll explain in a second. Uh, and your task as the students analyze and critique 
try out the model lease in theory, tell me what's wrong with it, because it hasn't gone live yet, it could be profits, tell me what's wrong. Okay, five freebies, the first freebie, oh, we, are we, okay, just all make sense? Okay, if you want to stop me, just stop me anytime. Okay, first freebie, what's the first freebie? It's the internet. So we're using the concept of the model, right? Yes. I'm going to back up here a little bit. Yeah. And you're talking, you know, very generally. Yes. And it's, it's extremely much more algebraic than geometric. With the x's and the y's and this stuff. Okay. I don't understand that part. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, when do you, at what point in time do you address the validity of your product? First, you have to do the model. Okay. If, 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 if no, 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 no. product is a physical thing, it's maybe it's a little different. But if it's a business, if your product is a business, you go through this kind of thinking, this kind of rigor to begin with, which we're going to do in a second. Well, it, or, product or service, because you know, right, either one, because they're all they're both physical. Right, they could be. You 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 apply this type of thinking with the model with great ruthlessly. It's a little off topic. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll get to that. Fair enough. It'll, it'll take us a little field, but I won't do it. So I'll, but I'll do it. Anyway. Okay. The internet. So using the concept of a lot of functional, not the form, what's the internet? Functional, what is it? It's a good idea to think about these things because some of these things become pervasive, and especially if you're younger, you never stop and think about it. But well, what is the internet? Communication. Very good. It's a common protocol. That's a really all it is. Right? That's all the internet. The common protocol for electronic communication. That's the internet. That's the definition. That's functionally what it is. It could be used for a lot of different things. And people that figured that out a long time ago, when Daniel was a, a, a very small child, uh, made a lot of money. Right? Because they know, they, what, are, what are the implications of that? So it's a platform. It's a platform of how much other things can write. That's all it is. So if you understand functionally what it is, helpful. What are the implications? It dramatically lowers the cost of published information. Think about it. Okay, I understand it. What are the implications? Well, relative to what I'm talking, going to be talking about here, cost of published information <coughs> has gone way down. Let's compare it with in the past when people had a physical magazine. What do they need to know to publish information? They need ink, trucks, a building, editors, writers, printing presses. <laughs> printing presses, which are enormous, cost a fortune, right? What do you need now in order to publish? To be a blog. <laughs> That's it. That's a pretty big difference, isn't it? Why is that possible? Because we have this common protocol for electronic communication. Sorry? What? You got to share. I said I'm good. And, and here I am. I'm looking at a, a small uh, job to go work with the, the press in town. Was an actual press. Yeah. It's like, well, Not a great there? future. I work for Billy <laughs> Mendes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's still probably a fair bit of future in that just because there's so many people that still want that kind of thing and will for quite a while. Let's hope you're right. I'm going to have to come see you because I, I hope so. Because it's a real specialty press. Specialty book. For those of people, my, my wife bought a uh, record player. <laughs> Actual, you know, yeah, well, whatever it's called, we put the turntable. Turntable. <laughs> my parents have a ton of records and they were the into a turntable. You can buy them. They're, they're, they're fairly, you can go with the Target. Yeah. yeah. But you know what they're used for? You have to, to record onto it. See. <laughs> but she likes it. Uh, they're wanting something nice that will connect to a nice stereo system and play the records properly, not just copy it onto a CD. Yeah. <laughs> that may be a little challenge. Yeah. Okay, so there's a third deal. So, what's it cost to use the internet? What does it cost? Um, cost of internet. At, at gameplay, nothing. Yeah. At gameplay? <laughs> yeah. I like Starbucks. It. Your margin Even Starbucks now. That's amazing. Finally. And Burger King. And McDonald's. <laughs> that's why Starbucks is free. Yeah. Well, that's pretty interesting. So that's the first of the five freebies that we're going to use on our model. Second, second of the five freebies, Google and other search engines. Right? Functionally, what, what, are, what are search engines do functionally? Funnel. Sorry? Funnel? They sort. They, they filter and sort. They do both of them. Right. So if, if you're a user, what does that do for you? Easier to find things. But to find them a lot easier. That's all it does. Just for you, that's all it does. User, it's a way to find information on the internet. What does it do for companies? The companies can be found. Thank you. That's what companies can be found on the internet. This is a way to think about it, right? This is a sort of an abstract way to think about it, but it's important because if we can pull out this essential reality, we can do things with it. 
What are the, what are the implications of this? That's pretty, that's pretty important. What are the implications? It dramatically lowers a whole bunch of costs. Once again, costs are going way down due to the internet. To the user to access information. Where in the past, I may have to go to the library, get out the microfiche, right? Um, you understand what it's a by, <laughs> by, by directly. Unbelievably difficult to find information. You had to go through the it was now we don't have to do those things. Yeah. Well I, I've read a lot of stuff off of those. You went through our, I've read a ton of stuff off of those going through archives. You must be looking at really old stuff. Yeah. A lot of it was like old newspapers and different things. People yeah. people <clears throat> would lose or misplace records and I had to go look things up. Yep. Yeah. They're horrible. It's sort of compared to that because you have something that could compare it again. So to the user to access information, it's essentially, what, what is Google charging? Depends. No. Can Basic be service is zero. What does it, what does it cost to search? Uh, nothing. Cost to search or nothing, zero. Now, if a company uses SEO, does everyone know what SEO is? So Raise your hand if you don't know what SEO is. You don't know if you don't know. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> you don't know. I know. Okay. Very quickly, it stands for search engine optimization. It's the science and the art of getting your information as high up as possible on the not paid for search results, what people call organic search results. If you're an expert in SEO, that's what you do. Right? So if you, if you know how to do that, right, what does it cost you to get found? Zero. Zero. Full time. Very uh, full cost time. time yeah. Cost you brain power, right? Yeah. That's all it costs you. Your, your knowledge and expertise in a little bit of time. And just so you know, we have a whole other presentation on video recorded here at GameSync all about how to manage your SEO. So. Good. Yeah. But I have to pay him to do it. Yeah, somebody like I'm too busy doing other things. But by the way, there's a whole, well, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> yeah. There's some reputable companies around for that. Yeah, more non-reputable. Yes, there's a lot more non-reputable. It's just not that hard. <laughs> so, what do we know about the people that, that find you through SEO? Through having your... They're reading the inbox. They're definitionally interested. They type something in. It's not just a random person. So that's pretty important if you can get those people in that part of the sales site. Right? What's the cost to use it? Doesn't cost anything. Right? So that's the second of the five freebies. Third one. Non-vendor content providers. Who are they? These are the people who provide content and go and sell it. Examples would be people like on TripAdvisor, Wikipedia, they write a review on Amazon and so forth. Right? They're providing content. Why do they do it? That's a darn good question. <laughs> right? But they do it. People do it all the time. Maybe I just put some, they want to help, sense of belonging, maybe they're nice people, enhance their ego, whatever. It doesn't really make a difference. The point is, is that they do do it. And how much does it cost those companies for this content, valuable content? How much is true? Zero. It doesn't cost them anything. It's Actually, free. in many cases, it makes them money. Because in the case of Wikipedia, they're a multi billion dollar company and all of its donations. That's right. And I'm going to show you a model where hopefully we'll make some money off this stuff, too. So this, these are inputs. Number three. That's exactly the point. Freebie number four vendor content providers. This is a little bit different. Uh, and this is sort of a wrinkle I put into my business model. These are people who are trying to sell something. Uh, who are going to provide content for free as well. So who would these people be? Let's say that you had a site where you were um, bringing people to the site through search engine optimization or interested in retiring overseas. And let's say that uh, Teresa here was a real estate agent in Panama. And someone types in cost of a home in Panama. Let's say I went to her and I said, <clears throat> let, 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 let's, let's consider Teresa here and her problem. She is a real estate agent. She has these people that she wants to reach in the United States. The internet exists, Google exists, all the other stuff exists. How is she going to reach them? Put up a website maybe, right? Do some SEO if she knows how. <coughs> Good luck with your average person. And let's say she even does put up a website. Someone sees it. So what? Right? So, the attributes, people like her, they're small to mid-sized, there's lots of them getting into my model exactly. They don't have the scope for knowledge or money to use SEO to reach your prospects. Sorry, you don't. You're a real estate agent. Fan. You have a large quantity of diverse prospects who all would like to meet you, but you've got to present yourself with some credibility. 
You're Teresa from Panama. They don't know you from anything. Right? What do you guys do? You, you provide content. I'm going to show you how you're going to provide content. Right? Let's say I went to Teresa and I said, Teresa, we have a site that's coming up. It's going to have tens of thousands of people a month who are interested, definitionally, because I'm using SEO, of retiring abroad. You're a real estate agent in Panama. Got a whole bunch of questions that are almost an exact match to the search terms that people put in. That people put in. The reason I know this is I went to Google and it's free, and I could see how many times people typed in the terms, and I could also see what the competition is, and we're going to wind up on the top. Mm -hmm. I've got a proposition for you. I'll tell you what. I'll let you answer some of those questions, and I'll let you put your name, Teresa of Teresa's Panama Real Estate, and it won't cost you a penny. Who are you now when you're saying this? Um, I got this website. Oh, okay. You have a different, you're not me, you're someone else with the you're website. You're you, and I'm asking you. Okay. So, uh, I've got all these questions. You can answer them if you choose to, and you can put your name. You get some free publicity, goodwill. People get to know you a little bit, find out a little bit about you. Would you do it? Would you answer some questions? Oh, you know. Of course you would. That's another content provider. That's a vendor content provider. So why do you do it? Enhance your reputation, get noticed, right? No charge. Within my model, which you guys are going to critique, this is the first rung of the value ladder. For her, I'm going to wind up getting money out of her before it's all over. At the beginning of all time. It's going to give her a free opportunity. Okay, cost of the company for her provide answering those questions, how much does it cost? Zero. Zero, she's not charging zero. zero. She's happy I'm not charging her. Right? Because that's what she thinks is going to happen. Okay, final three to the community. This, this has to do with the social network. This is where I always get stuff. No, the community? got a great book for you or for any of you who are interested in community. It's called, it's written by Clay Shirky. Um, S-H-I-R-K-Y. Brilliant S -H -I -R -K -Y. book. S-H-I-R-K-Y. Yeah, it's called Here Comes Everybody. <laughs> Brilliant book. Thank you. Where he explains it. And then the, the follow-on book was good as well. Yeah, it's called Cognitive Surplus. Brilliant book. So, the community. What does the community do? Who are they? What do they do? They vote on stuff. Right? These are the people that go vote, they rate, they <laughs> comment, right? That's what they do. What does that result in for a company like mine? Well, they curate the content. What curation means is they promote the best content yeah. and they demote the worst content, like an editor would on a magazine. But they, except they're not charging, right? And the community, by definition, is correct. So they curate, they police the participants. Teresa's not going to want to write something and get demoted because she'll look silly in front of her, uh, in front of her potential customers. So she's going to write quality content. Here comes everybody. <laughs> Play shirt. Okay. The third thing is a dramatically increase the credibility of the participants. If you go to a site and you see that that site has this voting, rating, comment, all this type of stuff, don't you think it's more credible than if you just see Teresa's site and she says how wonderful she is? even though she is. But well, they provide that as well. Why do they do it? Same reason as the other people, right? What's the cost of the company for the community to provide them? Zero. Zero. It's great. How do we assign any validity to what the community inputs? Thank you. Because they keep Is doing it. Let me ask all of us here. Mm -hmm. You have two different sites. One of them has no community. It's just written by Teresa. This is a wonderful place to live. It's, uh, it's, uh, Weather's always great, and uh, everything is free, it's and uh, I get massages every day for a dollar and a half. You go in, you see that. Now, let's say you go on to another site, and there's a whole bunch of answers by a whole bunch of people to a whole bunch of different <coughs> questions with the same question. And some of them are rated, there's comments, there's answers, blah. Which one do you believe? Me. That's you. No, because that's yeah. you. you Where's the computer? validity? You just you just Where would you, which one would you tend to believe if you had to choose between the two? first call I make would probably be directly to her. Say, why are all these other people? Yeah. Okay. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me put it to you this way. My generation would tend to work second. I, I know, but yeah. I have children much older than anyone else in this room. I, when I go to TripAdvisor, I give validity to those answers. And certain people will, certain people won't. Maybe there's a certain percentage that won't. But I'm betting that more of them find it a value than don't. You know, the endorsements yeah. is what you're talking about. Yeah. Endorsements. And the key is, it's unsolicited, and the key is it's not edited. The site itself has no interest in people liking or not liking anything. 
So, and that's got to be key and stated up front. Yeah. We don't edit, we don't promote, we don't demo, we let the community do that. And the community says that one of our vendors is no good, guess what? It's staying there. And if the people believe it, it's helpful. But that's extremely important. Otherwise, what you have is you have a site which is just a bunch of come ons, right? To sell people stuff and it's not believed. So, some people will believe it, some people won't. The world is certainly going to the community. And by the way, there's a whole a gigantic amount of research. And in Cognitive Circle, C goes over a lot of this. Showing that the community gets the right answer way more often than even experts. It only takes but, one time for it to, to show itself up, to prove itself that you become, you know, a diehard. Yeah. And nowadays, just the fact that you have the community means you're going to probably be higher up in the search engines. People yeah. are going to find you better Absolutely. on Twitter and Facebook. And Absolutely. Particularly the truth industry. So within the, the internet, the internet values what? Openness, mm -hmm. participation, honesty, all that type of stuff, because it's, it, it's tra more transparent than in the past. In trans, you can hide a lot. You can't hide on a community. It's much harder. So if you can embrace that and understand that model, you can do well by it. But it, it also does work. I'll share something with you very quickly. You guys have watched Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, right? The, 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 there's a part in there where they say, uh, you, get, you get to call a friend or the, the, you ask the audience or whatever. Right? So when they ask the audience, these are average people, and it's a difficult question. What percentage of the time would you say the audience gets it right? And these are just average people asking a difficult question. Depends on the subject. It doesn't. There's four the choices. Choice it does not. There are, there are four choices, A, B, C, and D. We'll ask the audience a very difficult question that none of them are necessarily experts or not experts. Well, they're guessers. Well, we're getting to that. How often would you say that, how often would you say that the right answer gets most votes? 25%? I would think 25% too. It should be completely random. It's about 70 something percent. It gets Jeez, the right answer? It gets the right answer. Why? Well, is that after they already scratched one of them off and phoned a friend and you get down to wow. like two of them? Over. I wouldn't have thought No, no, no. no. Even with four? But, but even, with, but even with four. Even with four. The reason, so why is it? Go ahead. Because first you have the, 20, the random 25% of the people they're guessing. Mm -hmm. Then you have another portion of the audience, which is now a smaller group, mm -hmm. that actually happens to know the answer. Exactly right. That's the answer. Very, that's a subtle point which eluded me. I thought, like you, 25%. He's exactly right. Everyone else is randomly dispersed, except for the three or four people maybe that do know the answer. Mm -hmm. So they get slightly more. Strangely enough, my, my wife watches that show daily yeah. with the sound off. Yes. Now, Jeopardy, you got to put it on because of the answer. It's <laughs> a conversation. That's all too. And, and I have seen that they go wrong a number of times. And she says, but look at the audience. Look at, look at the age of the audience. Mm -hmm. And they're ask, asking something about the Supreme Court in yeah. yes, uh, 1787. Yeah. <coughs> know. Yeah. But if it's a, a pop, you know, if, it, if it's a, a pop culture, yeah. there's a good chance that they're going to be far more accurate. That's, that's why I said it depends on, depends on that audience. Uh, you will still find it over time. Yeah. Given everyone, if there's like, to use your example, let's say there's a bunch of young people, and three people are old, old geezers, right? Mm -hmm. The young people are going to are going to just like just like we said over here. The young people are going to put it's going to be random, and the geezer can know the right answer, and they're going to get the right answer. It, 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 it I've also seen that thing because they, they were again, it's, you know, it's you know, very extremely visual. Yep. You don't need the sound. And, you know, Sixty-eight percent of the audience says this, right. and they're wrong. Another time when it's like 18, 20 minutes, it's pretty down the middle. Yep. You know, 42 and, and, and 37 percent of the FQ. Um, and they get it right. Um, I would think the more difficult questions, they'd more, be more likely to get it right because you'd be more random. But anyway, the, the overall point is the wisdom of the crowd is astounding. And Actually, how, there was a thing I was reading that they um, figured up all of the questions where they had pulled the audience there. Uh -huh. And they found that the more difficult the question is, the more likely it was that the that it was right. That that's the percentage that's was the point. Right. Yep. Because the other ones would be random, just like you yeah. said. Rather than people thinking they know the answer. Right. Wasn't yeah. Mark Twain that said it's not the things I don't know that get me, it's the things I do know that just ain't so. <laughs> which which is usually the, the, the bigger problem. Yeah. Okay. So those are the five parts of the, the, the so this goes into the model. You in sort of an insight into my brain, so I'm thinking about this. Okay, there's these five free things. How do I make it into a model that, that creates some value? So, 
Here it is. It's called Best Places in the World to Retire. And I gave you a little bit about it earlier. So what it is, is there's two sets of customers. <laughs> you're, you're, you're about 10 years too late. It's, it's, it's Panama. Really? Yeah. Wow. Costa Rica costs the same as here, yeah, pretty close to it. Um, not here in Tucson, but like here in a nice place on the beach. So, target customers. <clears throat> now I sort of apply some other knowledge that maybe I have to do some research or figuring out how to apply this. There's 10,000 people every single day that are retiring in the United States, baby boomers. And that'll happen for the next 19 years. Quite a few of them have done a very good job of figuring out how to save for retirement and their fine. But then again, another large portion have not done such a great job. And because of the recent issues with the economy, home prices, people losing their jobs, low interest rates, blah, 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 they've got a problem. In fact, something like, yeah. and I've done some research, something like half the people that are in a retirement age will live on Social Security alone and maybe they have a net worth maybe of like $100,000. Then that's maybe. $2,000 a month. Good luck. Okay, so that's them. Whenever, whenever you have a business model, whenever you have a business, you identify a customer, right? Who's a customer? A customer, someone reaches in their pocket and gives you money. Why would they do that? They've got a pain. The customers, by definition, have to have some pain. You have to identify a problem. And you have to solve that problem. What's, what's, the, what's these people's problem? They don't have enough money to have a nice retirement. That's a problem. And it's fairly recent. Sorry, I just have to comment because everyone's seen Facebook tank. Yeah. I saw an interesting tweet recently and said the reason the stock value is changing because they don't solve an actual problem. You yeah. just do it for fun. That's right. No one they don't actually solve any problems for you. It, it, it's yeah. a want, right? Yeah. And it's sticky for that reason, so it had, obviously it has value. Mm -hmm. But to your greater point, you can do without it and you will live just fine. Yeah. 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 You can't do without yeah. electricity and yeah. gas and blah, blah, blah. so. Well, we'll, we'll see. They have not found their model. <coughs> they got a bunch of users, but they haven't figured out what's their model. How are you going to make money? They're trying. No one knows you. Solve the problem. But what problem? But what problem? No. Yeah. And you know what? There may be other problems with privacy in order for them to solve the problem. And they're not solving a problem for their users. They're solving a problem for their uh, advertisers. Uh, there, there's, an old, there, there's a phrase that applies to the Internet. If you're, you think you're the customer and they're not charging you any money, you're not the customer. You're the product. So, Facebook, do the problem. Okay, so millions of retirees, that's, that's a person with, with a problem. Who's the other people with problems? Right? Teresa's uh, Panama real estate, she's got a problem. I'm making a note on Panama, so Panama's the place to go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They have a, there's a whole bunch of reasons. You're already there, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I just came back two weeks ago. Beautiful. Okay, so let's talk about the value ladder. So, what, 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 how do we do to take? What do we do to take advantage of this? How does the model work? First rung of the ladder, we create the, the, the uh, website so that there's a structure for SEO, right? And for these people to enter all their different value and that it's relevant. So essentially, you go over to Google, you figure out who's typing in these search terms for retirement, you see how often they type it in, and you make an exact match between that. Q&A part of your website so that when Teresa answers these questions, she's answering questions by people who've typed in the search terms and they're going to, we're going to wind up high on the search engine results. Okay. We provide the, the content's provided at no charge, right? Who provides it? Yeah. Thank you. Right? No charge. So now the site's got a thousand questions, a thousand answers, more than a thousand answers, because many other people are doing it too, because it's in their interest to do it. People do things for their own interest. She wants to get to these people. I'm providing her a vehicle to do it. What happens then? Large quantity of definitionally interested and engaged project prospects visit the site. What's the price of a house in Panama? Like you type in, right? You go over to my site. There it is. There's the answer. You're happy about that, and we you, you get value. Now you're happy. Oh, look at this. I find an answer to my question in a reputable place. Not a, not a, and there's a, it's ranked and rated. There's multiple people. And there's other questions, so on and so forth. So you're happy. Then I go over to Teresa and I say, Teresa, thank you very much for putting in all those answers to questions. I appreciate it, right? You know what we're going to do? The site is completely non-commercial at this point. We're going to put a little button next to how much does it cost to buy a house in Panama. And it's going to say, if you're interested in talking with a vendor, push this button. We're going to have a listing there. And in that part, you're going to be able to put your phone number, a link to your site, which you weren't able to do before when you answered the questions. 
uh, something about your company, contact me, and so forth. And they'll already know who you are because you answered these questions. And they'll have to feel like they know you a little bit more and so forth. And you can rank high by the community and so on. So if you'd like, I'll let you do that for a couple months. No charge, see if you like it. And your competitors have all done it. So what do you think? Like you said, there's no obligation whatsoever. Uh, we can take it down. She's pretty invested at this point. Plus, she's got questions answered all over the place. And hopefully, she's got some value. For and we charge her. She has to provide a link back and so on and so forth. But the point is, we, get to, we charge her for a listing. So think about it. Who's created the value that's now? Well, first, who's getting the $60? No lie. Who created the value? Uh, well, not you alone. It's a five free It's the internet, search engines, everyone else, blah, blah, blah. And we created the platform and the structure for you to for you to win. Now, would you be unhappy about this? You shouldn't be. You're going you're to get access to all these people because we're creating excess value than the $60. Right? But who created it? Well, the internet created it. These other things created it. Right? So, what we're also going to do later on, we'll do webinars. So, we'll go to Teresa and say, you know, if you'd like to, uh, you can put on a webinar. Buying property in Panama. Do you have to be a resident? What's title like? All these little more involved questions. So where people are really interested, you can be the expert. They already know you from the answering the questions. <coughs> you can put it on. We'll charge them five bucks a piece to, to attend your seminar, webinar rather. Charge you maybe a dollar and a half for each person or whatever. For you. Dollar and a quarter to have people. And if you'd like to do that, fine. Uh, and if uh, the visitors would like to do it, if they're interested, they're going to pay five dollars. They don't want to pay five dollars. They can pay two fifty to download the money. Same thing with virtual conferences. The result is pretty good because there's a lot of people. One thing about the internet, which is nice, you're not stuck by physical limitations. You could have a large, a, a large amount of revenue, and you could make a large amount of profit. Hopefully, because there's not a lot of people involved there. The value was created by other. People. Sorry. Reminds me of television all over again and ad advertising. The internet enables you to be a lot more focused and a lot more directed. You know exactly to where you need to be. But television did that for people when it first came in. Yeah. The uh, focus? The focus and it had a larger audience. And you got charged the focus per person. Broadcast. You got charged per household. Because okay. you would put it on the channel and in the time slot right. where the people that you're interested are going to be watching. Right. So on some level, obviously, if, if they're doing a Which is more focused than just sending out. Yes. Let a letter yes. address the resident. You're, you're right. You're right. Thinking so beer commercials go on sporting events and Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's true. To a certain extent. So this is, this that, is that, that T V was a step forward from what they were doing before right. and this is another step forward. Right. Mm -hmm. right. This enables you to be even more targeted. Mm -hmm. And when you can target and slice and dice this stuff up, you could sell each portion has value to someone. Cool, isn't it? Sorry? It's cool. So that's what it looks like. That's that's what it looks like this is actually like so that's it. Tell me what your what your comments are. Wait a minute. What are we looking at? That's the site. The site. The to do list. The whole site. This this is that's the awesome. part of the home page right here. That's awesome. It took a long time to get there. So there's a we already went from the theory theory of the model. Talk a little bit more about the, the inputs. There's the output, mm -hmm. right? And here's the value. So tell me what you think. First question is how do you how do you create for yourself as an authority or as a validity in your site? If it, like I remember saying at Yahoo and Bob well, had our just recently an article, the best place to retire in the history of And obviously you see that you know people create articles and content that help you out. Same time like how do I know to trust your site versus even that even that domain name, even a domain name creates, you know, authority, I would say, when you have that domain. You know, like I have a website about comedy in the one of the Bay Area, sorry, a website about comedy in the Bay Area called SF Stand Up, and people go to me and go, oh, well, this must be the guy that has all the info about that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that helps. It, it, it does help, but, but to, to this point directly, there's a difference between, let's say, me writing content. I don't answer a single question. I don't know the answers to the question. I really don't. I don't know what you cost for a house. I don't know, you know do I have to speak English? I don't know anything. So, the credibility comes from, there's no editorial uh, supervision. It's just people answering questions and people rating those and the community will rate yes or no based on whether they think it's correct or not. 
And as you get more and more people answering the questions, so let's say if someone, you see, how are Americans treated in Panama? And you see there's 15 different answers, right? Rather than one answer by one person who may have a reason, right? You'll, look, you'll say, okay. And then it'll say maybe a little bit about the person. Well, here's a woman that thinks it's not very safe. Here's a man that thinks it's awesome because he can go zip line it every day. Well, what's your mind, right? Which one do I put more credit to? So you're not going to have any edit any uh, like articles written by zero. Oh. I shouldn't say zero. There, 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 there's a part in there which is an interactive questionnaire which you put down what you like. You want to be by the mountains, the ocean, whatever, and it'll recommend places for you. But from that point, the Q and A is 100% users, no editorial comment control at all. Other than just you take some articles to get you going, like with SEO and stuff. No, Teresa's going to pick that up. And it doesn't matter because it's going to build itself. Build as soon as someone starts adding into it, that they'll know that the, if any, you have anything to do with retirement, you're going to want to be on this site. Mm -hmm. So you'll still start to seek him out. I think. I mean, well, that's what I'm other imagine. people will come across it, and hopefully they'll put stuff into it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to in any way monitor. Well, I monitor it because people say things, obviously, that are. Right. The terms of service have to be different. But if people are respectful and so on and so forth, they can put in whatever they like. I hate it here. It's too hot. Fine. We'll leave it there. Right? So that's the answer to the question. Do you have perfect credibility? You know, is it omniscient? No. But if, as people look and they see a whole bunch of people answer the question, and they see a certain trend, they'll tend to believe it. And if they don't, fine. That's okay, too. Because I don't have to get every single person that looks at this to retire to Panama. I just have to get them to consider it at a certain percent, enough for our vendors to think it's worthwhile to give you $60 a month. That's all. So I have a question. So whenever you create a platform or a community or, or those kinds of things, um, because it's a multi-sided business model, you've got, like you said about the Facebook, because you're not paying anything, you are the product, right? right. Um, <coughs> so whenever you have that type of business model, um, you've got a chicken and the egg problem. You're not going to have people come into this website if there's no content. And people right. aren't going to put the content there if there's no people coming. That's right. So how do you, yeah. uh, with this business model, those, how, do you, how do you plan to solve that problem? Yeah, along those same exact lines, I was thinking just like here, like of my parents, yes. they would be the content providers, yeah. but they might also be the customers as well. Yeah. They don't like the internet. Right. You know, they don't spend a lot of time on it. It's like, my email's broken. Yeah. You know? Why? Because the thing that allowed me to click on my desktop isn't there anymore, so therefore I'm powerless, yeah. you know? So those people, the input of the content, yeah. you know, this, when I look at this business, I think it's a growth business because all the people who will retire, you know, 10, 20 years are all internet savvy. Right. Yeah, my dad's like 60, he does everything. Yeah, so it depends, like, you know. Well, what we're finding is I've, I've done some research into this, but I'm going to answer your question in a second. Quick, chicken and egg is the question. But relative to people using it, what they're finding is they're, it's sort of like if you could graph it out, young people, sort of middle aged, old people. They get back in, yeah, yeah. They're, because they have the time. They have the time. <laughs> and what, but what they're doing is they're not doing social stuff, they're doing research. Sometimes they have health issues and so forth, but they're, but they're doing research. But they're more savvy than you would think uh, mm -hmm. as a group. Then you have elderly people like my father, who's in his mid 60s. Right. He's not elderly. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was liking you, man. Yeah, just nice. fine. <laughs> so this really old guy is like, well, well, uh, Okay, you all need to look at Jane Fonda's recent TED Talk about the third chapter. Yeah. Very cool. All right. 55 isn't quite old. Jesus. Elderly yet. 65 yes. is, is getting there. Yes. In my book, anyone on, on Social Security has to be classified as. By definition. Sorry about that, but... Oh, you, need, you need it more. He'll Your day's coming, yeah. He'll take it back in 40 years, it's all right. <laughs> right. Okay, so he's really old. It, well, he's not really old, yes. but... Elderly. Yeah, really old would be like... Don't even go... <laughs> you are, you are <laughs> digging Say yourself you deeper, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Okay. It, it, anyways... Um, <laughs> In his case, he was involved in the development of all this stuff. Of what? The, the internet. And yeah. Now, it's not like he was... Um, at work. What? 
Al Gore. Who invented it? Who invented it? Yeah. <laughs> Your dad isn't Al Gore, is he? <laughs> no. But he he was really involved with all this stuff as it was being developed. Yes. So him working on this stuff, it, it just what he does in his spare time. Yeah. There's a lot of people. So let's get to the chicken and egg question because that's correct. We see you know, our business plans all the time on the internet that the Desert Angels, nine tenths of them don't make any sense because the first question is, oh, this is a great site where people come and so on and so forth, but how do you get your first customer? When they go there, if there's no content, why do they stay? So that's a big issue. And if you say, well, I'm going I'm to go through search engine marketing, I'm going to pay for this, well, and you pay more than the customer's worth, that isn't real bright either. The way I'm doing it is when I go over to Teresa and I say, would you like to do this? The site is, is password protected at that point. It's not released. So I, I, you're not on search engines. I'm not on search engines or anything. So I say to her, this we're going to have, because mm -hmm. of blah, 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 so on and so forth, 10 to 20,000 people a month will be coming here. You're able to put your stuff. Certain of them will say OK. Certain will say no. Out there, I've identified 400 vendors in Panama alone who are advertising some other place or have some interest in this demonstration. <coughs> I have a thousand questions. I have a really good feeling I'm going to get those answered, at least to get started. After you release, you get more, and then you go back to the same people and you say it's released. Here's our, our monthly numbers. But the seeding of it is critical, and that takes place while it's password protected. So basically, well, then they become invested too. They become emotionally invested, which takes them up that value mm -hmm. level. So the which has to do with who's talking about negotiation? You, right? Mm -hmm. you, if you get some emotionally invested, they lose leverage within. The so that's one of the first principles in negotiation is to get the other party emotionally invested. Right. Well, she is when she answers those questions. Because she sees her name in there. And she sees her name in the all-time top contributors of the day, which we have on there, top contributors of all time. We have a spot where we thank all of them, where we put something about them, so on and so forth. She's part of it. She can take down her listing, fine. But her competitors are. So she's not helped her competitors, which may aggravate her so much that she may want to keep them from the Trump's philosophy. So you're saying you, you'll use search engine marketing and other techniques to get to the point of that first edit that you found out no. with no. all, all I do is I do research and I find people like you know, some, yeah. who are real estate agents, who have land to sell, who are relocation specialists, who have being the rest of breakfast because people would like to go there and try it out, or lawyers, accounts. I've identified about 400 of them. I call them on the phone. I didn't understand where the 10 to 20,000 eyeballs are coming from. You tell them it's coming. It hasn't come yet. Like Christmas. I, 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 like I, I, Christmas, you know? I have to convince her it's coming. Right. Okay. I, I'm asking how you're going to get the 10 to 20,000 eyeballs. So well, if you get say there, there, get that. there's 30 people, there's 30 or 40 people that you've convinced, right. they've got access to the private right. password protected, right. they've posted some of their content right. at that point, so then where, where does the 10 to 20,000 eyeballs come from? When the site launches, it goes on. Yeah, good goals. And people click on the site and start looking at the stuff. It's an exact oh, you're match. saying it's, it's the SEO that's it's the SEO. Yeah. Okay, it's it. an exact match. So as an example, if you put in the word, this has to do with SEO, if you put in the word Panama, there's 3,000, 3 million people a month typing that word. You'll never get in the top. It's impossible. But if you put in Boquete, Panama, which was rated number one place to retire in all of Panama, you guys probably know that. But other people, let's put this one. 18, 1,800 people a month type it in, right? We're going to be the Teddy Panama. We'll, we'll be number one on that one, close to it. Or if you type in the price of a house in El Valle and tell them, this goes to SEO strategy, but what we've done is we've created a bunch of niches that we can create number one. Each one of them maybe gets 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 people typing it in per month. And when you add it all up and you have 1,000 questions, it's a pretty good number. So we think 10,000 to 20,000 uniques per month is a Low enough. To go to this one, the, the URL, best places in the world to retire, that gets 2000 a month by itself. Just people typing it in. Right? Yeah, so you think I'm going to be number one on that one? Pretty good chance. Um, so that's how we chose it. Right? So it's believable. So the, 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 the huh. part that's why it's right, the, the part that's difficult, I, I have to convince Teresa yeah. that I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And then it's going to work. So mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll do a Skype demo. I'll show her the site. We'll talk about it. And she'll figure out whether it's worth 10 minutes of her time. Well, frankly, I think your idea, your your first step of phone calling, of a phone call, yeah. is, a, is 
that would sell me right there, frankly. And that's the same on the website. Yeah, we'll do, a, we'll do a Skype thing. I've done it a bunch of times already. People are saying, where is it? Which is annoying because it's not ready. Um, so they're ready to put their well, cards in. Well, you need to have the site up. It looks great on a design. Just a pure design I love comment. I love... Uh, I have a design comment. Actually, you do as well? Which is, um, and I see a lot of websites. This looks nice. Uh, it also tells me aggregated portal at first glance, uh -huh. which there's a million of those, right? Yeah. They have aggregators that just pick up feeds and publish them. Yes. I had to go like this to see the word credible in your byline. Yeah. I'm bringing that sucker out. Yeah. Because like, what distinguishes this from every one of those other portals is the credibility of yes. the information. So just smash them over the head with it. How are we different? That is Incredible. And big words. Don't be you afraid. Have, uh, we have Wi-Fi, right? I can get out right away. Yeah. I'll let you do it. Well, I shall be over. I have to take this off and take a second. The other point I was going to make, Brennan, is I like the use of the typewriter <laughs> because part of his demographic will relate to that. Yeah. Even Absolutely. if they don't, they'll remember it. It's kind of a vintage like, image. It tells me the <laughs> fiction. Not that. Just, it tells me the Pulp fiction, so the story is going to be like a crazy like, story of living somewhere. Around. So, how do I uh, get uh, on? Gameplay is the name of the network. So, there's a way. Come on over here and help me out. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you get on, and I'll, I'll show you the site very, very quickly. I think it has uh, several points of view. Family that has a lot of artists in it. Yeah. I'm an artist myself, and um, then from business cards. And then also certain psychological effects of the arrangement of the website. Mm -hmm. Good. Is this, uh, you know, I try to do the best I can putting myself in the position of these people. And you try to sort of take it down the middle, and I have certain discussions with the person that's mainly doing this. By the way, this is a Joomla site. Uh, who? <laughs> Joomla like like programs or something. It's like PHP. It's PHP. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. Oh, wow. oh, WordPress yeah, was yeah, designed yeah. for blogs. Yeah. And they've expanded to other stuff. Joomla was designed for community sites. Oh, really? Okay. The developers should package it to whatever the customer wants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here's, here's a live version. Right. Still need that. That need, does need to be bigger. That's a good comment, Bernard. Mm -hmm. Because that's, what, that's, that's how you're That's a big piece. Mm -hmm. So here we have first timers. These are for people that are not that familiar. No, welcome. The, the, the dedicated owner. There's an enormous amount of going into the value propositions, to your point, <laughs> right? It tells you about this. So if we can get them to click that one or how to use this site, which is pretty prominent. Here's our, fictional, go Here's our fictional guys, by the way. Here's Mary Smith and here's Jim Johnson. Mary Smith, by the way. Real diverse there, Chuck. <laughs> There's only two people. <laughs> like, how can I be diverse with <laughs> two Well, kids. one could have a by little way, power. Mary, Mary, Mary Smith, did, well, <laughs> Nothing good can happen without him saying that. I know. So, I so, so, so here's, here's her profile. Here's his profile, right? And they're going to help you along the way, right? They're aspirational. And these over here, also the value proposition, also credible value. information, so forth. Yeah. This goes by itself. And you have the first timers guys. This is done sort of today's top contributors. This goes to the ego, right? And also free publicity. Hopefully, you'll want to do this. Here's a map. Here's a bunch of stories that were put in and so forth. And what I wanted to bring you guys' attention to is the pledge. Can you guys see the pledge? Barely. You know, we're in that elderly stage. Yes, we're yeah. very. Yeah. That, that means yeah. bigger. All right. Yeah, and why is it at the bottom? Well, no. you will always work it out. I know. No, no. You know what's funny? Sometimes, you know, what I found sort of interesting, I'll, I'll share this with you. Guys, I, I sit in on the Desert Angels screen here. And people will ask questions, right? Or the, the, the angels, supposedly these are, the, and I can I can predict what each one is going to ask. And many times, the people that are given this are given this information, this uh, uh, suggestions, will go crazy because one guy likes blue, somebody likes green. He wants it at the top. He wants it. At the top. It's 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 you can go insane with art and artistic type stuff. It's critical at some point, right? You just go with whatever it is. If, if it's no, there's a real, there's a real science. These guys know it way better than I do. Yes. But there is a, it isn't you go with it. There's a real science to where you put things oh, yes, on there. And it really, it does really make sense. 
uh, I attended the word camp, and, and I'm a, a real believer in it now. And, and I, I don't do that. <laughs> Get someone who really knows. I'm, about talking, I'm not talking about that. I, I, I really made it. I meant in business in general. So if someone gives you advice just because they're successful, it doesn't really mean anything. Because you can get... They all have an opinion. They all have an opinion, just like belly button, right? It, everyone's got one. <laughs> that's a nice one. Right. I'm going to show you guys something real fast. What did I, you say, Eric? I said that's one way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> they all have belly button. So uh, here's the community Q&A part, part I was talking about before, which is the oh, exact yeah. match. So you have general, you have all of Panama, you have region, and so forth. So if you went over here and you said, oh, what's the cost of living? It'll have that, you'll have that question, you'll have the answers. These are all taken pretty much from Google. So the idea is if, if you're really interested, let's say about Panama, Costa Rica, whatever, hopefully this will provide some value to you. You say, wow, this is sort of nice. I'll show you this because you guys get a kick out of this. This is an unusual application of a, of a Joomla plugin. Interactive questionnaire. We'll have We'll, 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 we'll talk about um, Teresa, because you have to pick on you the whole time. Let's talk about your lifestyle, Teresa. I think is what we're we talking about. Okay, you answer these questions, and we'll make a recommendation for you. This is the only part that we're actually putting in information. So you tell us what kind of person you are, and we'll make a recommendation as to what place makes sense for you. So are you are a money exchange, upscale and chic, banana republic, Oh my God, I'm not big well, you got to pick one. All right, I like Eddie. Eddie Bauer? Yeah. Where is it? So we'll choose that. Here's the places that make sense for you. Let's try this one. So this is like, you know, women like that. Sometimes you see those magazines where you have all these questions. Mm -hmm. Here's the place that's right for you. And here's the pros of living there. There's the cause of living there, there's where it's located. So, that's great. And if you want to go to QA about it, you click on it over here, it'll take you back. <clears throat> that's cool. Thank you. So this is the type of thing. And you see sort of the genesis of it, and that's the how it came together. So if anyone knows anyone that is has any time to do some Joomla program, a little bit more of the technical stuff, uh, a little bit of database stuff. I would have one technical comment, which is this site to me, and I don't know, it doesn't look mobile. Like it has a version of the mobile optimized, and really you should be programming with that because next year, mobile devices, people will access websites with mobile devices more than traditional laptops and so forth. Yeah, true, so, except that, 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 that I just have two comments. One is I'm having a hard enough time. I know. Give this for a technical, yeah, we'll do the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Launching site is not easy. Yeah, that's what I want to do on the launch. So that's the first thing. The second thing, this is not going to be part of the issue with mobile as much as I Okay. This but is the only reason I bring it up is because now themes like the WordPress theme lot, they yeah. come mobile optimized. Yep. So they must, they'll do the work for you. Basically. Yeah. In a couple of years, we'll be mobile, but I can't see. You know, one of the advantages of mobile is you have something with you, and if you need to do something relative to the place where you are, or you need to check something at that point. Can, but most people, although we will go to mobile, I'm not saying we won't, mm -hmm. because we will, it's stupid not to, mm -hmm. they do this kind of stuff from a laptop. Yeah, it's almost like research. Or something. It's research, yeah. yeah. Not like it is research, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, You'll see an iPad. I have a couple comments on kind of the psychological effect of this site. Yeah. The, the colors that you have, the arrangement, it's, it's good and everything. But why is your navigation menu on the left side? Have you ever stopped to think about that? No. All right. <laughs> so people place the navigation and different things like that on the left side because you read from left to right. That's yeah, that makes sense. But when someone comes to the, comes to a page on the site, they want to read the content. Yeah. And if they have to cross over the navigation menu, right. it causes a context switch in the brain right. which slows them down and they they don't like the experience as much. Mm -hmm. Also, most people are right-handed. Right. So, the 
things on the right side of the site are actually easier to get to. Makes sense, you have to cross over. Yeah. Right. So by putting your navigation on the right side of the site, right. you'll get a better psychological effect on user experience. And that is why... That's a matter of debate. Uh, that's totally well, a matter of debate. Yeah. Uh, that, that's that's totally why Stack Overflow and various other sites put theirs on the other side. So only geeky developers like you and me have Stack Overflow, okay? <laughs> But well, there's the problem. Not just so the reason, it's up, the reason it's up for debate is because the web is top and left justified, not right justified. So your links well, could then be. What, what I'm talking about is not the justification of the web, not the, the technology. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the psychological effect. Right. I, I get it. I understand. But I'm just I get from a technology point of view, it is much easier to do this way, more practical, in, in many respects. Yeah, and your links won't be off screen necessarily. Yeah. yeah. But so, from the psychological a point of view, over. it is actually. I get a great guy for Thank you. He's awesome. Yeah, there are many great guys. Is there a way for me to post that I need to you know the video? Aaron, how do we do the job for I never figured out how to do that. Can we do that before I leave? Okay. Was this helpful? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to be a realtor in Panama. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm looking for it. my third chapter. I'm in this. I'm, I'm in my senior that. year. Now. I'm so going to go to Trader Joe's place. or something in Panama. Right? To, <laughs> oh, to yeah. serve your people in Panama. You're going to open a Trader Joe's? Some Trader Joe's in Panama, yeah. To serve the people in Panama. But you haven't sold the house. He's not trying to sell the house. He already got me to plunk down 60 bucks to be on part of his website. I want, I want to sell him on. I want to sell her on. Oh, by the way, the house is maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars there. You can make yourself five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars on the house. So it's a pretty reasonable one. All right. So the, the, the overall point was we, we go from the very theoretical, right? Some facts that maybe seem to make sense. You put it all together, you come up with a model, see if it makes sense. Here's the model. And here's, here's even the, the representation of the model ready to go. So can you, do you recommend being able to state your model in a sentence? And can you do it for this one? For like two sentences or three? Stating something in no. a sentence is usually your high concept. Yeah, which is sort of the model, right? No. Which is kind of high concept. No. High concept is the overall idea of the general direction that you want to take with things. The model? The model, no, the, the model is this is how we're going to structure our business and our marketing and